pulled off the car's leg job all right. Did I? And I covered up my tracks nicely, too. You'll find the papers will be telling you that it was an inside job. I never cracked a neater crib. Thanks to the way Madame handles things, they won't find a single clue. Well, I wouldn't be too cock sure about that. The only thing I got against the Madame's system is it takes the thrill out of things. There ain't no danger nor excitement. It's like getting a box of candy at a Sunday school picnic. Yeah, a lot you know about Sunday schools. Well, what's the swag worth? Take him up, Jim, and make a guess. Well... I'd say a hundred thousand is a penny. A hundred thousand? A hundred and fifty thousand easy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, forty thousand is the most it'll bring. But whatever the hall nets me, it all gets a usual share. Ninety for him and ten for us. Smart guy. Well... I'm going to turn in. I need some rest. Yeah, honey. You need your beauty sleep. <laughs> yeah, I guess we better all retire. There's a lot of heavy work to be done tomorrow. Well, boys, I'll let you look up tonight. I've got a hard day tomorrow. Okay, madam. Uh, what do you say if we don't come down till late tomorrow? I'll meet you at the L at four o'clock. We'll come down on the L. It's less than six. If I was you, I'd hop separate cars. They might be cops around. Yeah, it's a good mm. idea. Well, come on, madam. I'll let you out and then lock up. Madam, all right. Jeez, you'd hardly recognize her. God, it's awful. 
What are we going to do now? You know, the first thing we do is keep our mouth shut. Come on, let's beat it out of here. Charming place, the morgue. Who used to mind making up like this? We can't put it over. I'll tell you, we're in a jam without the man. Don't weaken, Jim. We can get away with it, all right? That's no use. Ah, quit your squawking, both of you. Whatever we do, we're not going to waste any more time about it. Our game is about up here anyway. So let's clear out. What do you mean, clear out? Gee, it's taken us ten years to build up this racket. Well, we can think out another one just as good. We'll all stick together and make the best of it. The cinch none of us can take the madam's place. What do you suppose that is? Go on and take a look. I am very sorry, madame. But it's I, Mrs. Lyon. I must see Madame Mysteria. It's very important, please. But Madame Mysteria is not here. It is not possible for her to see client tonight. Oh, it's been ages since I've had any message from my dear husband. And I must consult him about the market. My affairs are in dreadful shape. My stocks are all down. He Might I respectfully suggest that you try again tomorrow? Oh, I've even tried the Ouija board. It only swells at me. I am sorry, but it is quite hopeless tonight. Then uh, tomorrow? Tomorrow at noon. Salam alaikum. It was Mrs. Lyons. I stole her off till tomorrow. And it looks like it's all over. We can't go on without the madam. Well, if you ask me, I'm willing to call her today. Gee, this place gives me the creeps. I'm going back to picking pockets. Looks like I'd have to go back to making that high school gin again. What are you going to do, Fluffs? Well, there are plenty of rackets for me. But I must say, this one is the best one I've ever thought of. A rotten shame we can't keep it going. What are you going to do with Dogface? Well, we sell him back to the circus. There's always a job for a wild man. Yeah, and we can always use that extra pound of raw meat. From Jane. What do we do? Concentrate. Now, maybe we can put this over by ourselves. See, there's no harm in trying it. Goofy, you be the madam. Huh? Nix, no, that's out. No, sir. I'll do anything else, but I won't be no madam. Now, you do as I tell you. No. Come on, you'll be the man. Right. Come on, you'll be swell. I always thought you would be. Come on, I'll try this on. Why do I always have to do the dirty right. work? This is going to be the making of you, kid. Yeah. Let's start the old helmet on. <coughs> well, that's a perfect fit, just like it was made for you. Quit your kidding. Yeah, it's a shame we have to cover up this lovely fazaka of yours. Mm -hmm. You ought to have a glass veil. That's what you that's really ought to have. So. I swear.
draw near sister, and be comforted. Wouldst thou speak with some dear departed one? Well, no. I came here to look for a job. Isn't this the hole in the wall? What's your name? Jean Oliver. Who sent you? Danny McKeever. Where did you know Danny McKeever? In prison. I got out a year ago. What did they send you up for? Lost me. I didn't steal, though. They said I tried to take a necklace and two rings, but I didn't do it. Who said that? The woman I worked for. Mrs. Ramsey. I found out afterwards that she hid them herself in my trunk. You see, she wanted to railroad me. Sit down. Mrs. Ramsey. Yes, I was her companion and secretary. Oh, it was a hard place, but the money was sure. And you know, work is hard to find in this town unless you're trained for something special. Well, anyway, it was all right. Till her son fell in love with me. God knows I didn't want him. I was in love with someone else, a boy I went to school with. But she got the idea I wanted to marry him. Oh, she was terribly afraid. She decided to get me out of his way. Yes, it wasn't enough just to dismiss me. She wanted to fix it so he'd be done with me for good. So she did it. She sent me to jail for four years. Four years? How old are you now? Twenty-four. Oh, God, the, the things I've learned these last few years. They should have killed me outright. It would have been much kinder. There's only one degradation I haven't suffered. Yeah. I know. I'd rather be a thief. That's why Danny McKeever sent me here. He told me when I got to the point where I didn't care anymore, I should come to Madame Mysteria. She'd put me wise to the trade. And I'm sorry for you, kid. But you're playing in tough luck. Madame Mysteria was killed in that L wreck yesterday. Killed? Yeah. I'm sorry. Now, wait a minute. I may be able to help you. How would you like to step in the madam's place? Be a spiritualistic medium. Me? Yes, you. You're intelligent and you've got a good voice. Voice is the chief asset in the madam's business. When she wanted to, she could make the creeps run up and down your back with that voice of hers. Yes, but don't you see, I, I don't know a thing about spiritualism. Well, neither do we. But we've mastered the tricks. Now, don't you worry about that. No spiritualistic medium is expected to know anything herself. She depends on her controls for information. In this instance, I am her control. I'll show you. Come on. Sit over in that chair. Oh, well. Come on, don't be scared. I'm not going to hurt you. That's a good girl. Sit down. Come on, sit back. That's it. Now rest your arms, naturally, on the arms of the chair. There now, do you feel anything? Well, oh, yeah. But there's something throbbing inside there. It's electrical vibrations controlled from another room. Now, I'm going to show you how we get by with this craft. Now listen closely. Now, you know the code they use up at Auburn and Sing Sing to communicate from cell to cell? Every prisoner knows it. Yes, I know it by heart. Well, that's the code we use here. My friend Goofy here helps me out. Now, I'm going to give you a trial right now. You're going to be Madame Mysteria and you're going to tell Jimmy's fortune. I'm going to show you how simple it is. Oh. Come on, Goofy.
Please, Madame Mysterio, can you get me a message? Of course, I don't really believe in spiritualism, but I'm willing to be convinced. In fact, I want to investigate these phenomena. I want to be convinced. I have a message here for... Matt. Is Matt here? Why, my name is Matthew. There's a woman with blue eyes. Yes. Did you get it? I'll tell the world she got it. I'm going to kid her about Jim's girl. Yes, See if she knows that. She says you can call her... Something beginning with a G. Is it Georgie? G? G. Maybe it's Jane. Yeah, I'm more frail with the name of Jane. She's with a tall man. I bet it's that Reverend Mark Carmichael. <laughs> he says you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> there, you see? Simple, ain't it? Well, I don't know. I, I don't think I'm going to like it very much. No, you'll like the money it pays, all right. And to begin with, we'll set you up with a good sum. Now, what'd you say your name was? Jean Oliver. You want to keep it? No, it's never meant anything to me but hard luck. Jim, you go down the morgue and identify Madame Mysterious' body as Jean Oliver. Listen, if I take this job, the first thing I want to do is get even with Mrs. Ramsey. Will you help me? I certainly will. I want to make her suffer the way she made me suffer. All right, kid, you're on. What's the dope? Do you remember that son of hers I told you about? Yeah. Well, after they set me up, he forgot all about me. Sure, I knew he would. I wasn't up there four months when he married Alice Scott, the daughter of Senator Scott. They had a daughter. She's the only grandchild. Mrs. Ramsey all just worships her. Well, I'm going to kidnap her. Hey, that's pretty risky business. Public opinion is dead set against kidnapping. And a well-known child like that, why, she's the heiress to millions. Now, don't get me wrong. There'll be no money in it for any of us. I'm not kidnapping her for the ransom. I'm going to bring her up with me. I'll teach her to hate the laws that I hate. To lie and cheat and steal. And someday when she's caught, I'll send word to Mrs. Ramsey and tell her what I've done with her granddaughter. Hello, Chief. Mm, hello, Grant. I, uh, I see you guys have some more great stories about the uh, robbery last night. Huh? I'm a newspaper man. I never read the papers. You know, I don't care a rap who was at the opera, or who was run over, or who committed suicide. Well, what's on your mind today? Plenty. They've been ranting the life out of me because I haven't cleared up that Cars Lake gem theft. Well, I've run down every clue. There isn't a ray of hope. Yeah? Headlines. Inspector Nichols says not a ray of hope. You don't want me to print that, do you? No, oh, come on now. You've done some good work for me before. Now, you covered the story for the Chronicle, so you must have some hunch about it. Well, I have had something up my sleeve since the robbery. But it might sound silly to you. Who do you suspect? Well, I found out that Mrs. Carslake believes in spiritualism. Uh, what of it? Oh, nothing. Only you remember the Compton robbery during the summer? Yes. Two hundred thousand dollars worth of jewels stolen. Mm -hmm. No clues. Well, Mrs. Compton believed in spiritualism, too. It's rather strange that both women should be clients of the same medium. Madame Mysteria? Hmm. You mean... You 
think she was connected with the... Oh, I doubt if we could prove anything. But I'm going to make her acquaintance. You know, mystery has always interested me ever since I was a kid. That's why I like this racket. Uh, have you ever seen this, madam? No, but I've heard a lot about her. I want a good look at this woman who sits always in a dim-lit room with her face veiled and who lives behind thick walls through which no sounds pass. Well, okay. You look over the spooks. I'll watch the live ones. Hmm. get that kid back. Yeah. She's a cute kid, isn't she? Well, you like her, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Guess I'll take her milk up to her. They coming up? Sure. Crackers and jam. Oh, look at this. Oh, my, please. Be careful now, don't get any on your drip. Yeah, look at that. What? Oh, you. Edmund. Oh, you. Oh, Fox. Gee, I forgot to feed Dog Face. Better go and feed him now, huh? Go ahead. Some more? <laughs> You better hurry up with that kid. We've booked up solid for the afternoon. All right. Hey, what time is it by your watch, Jim? Give me back my watch and I'll tell you. What do you mean? Ah, oh, cut that. I know your stuff. I put your fingers on my pie in my pocket a little while ago when I was feeding the kid. Ah, oh, go and lay a knee. Look, Mommy. What? Oh, my. What guy, ain't you? Well, oh, for the love of Mike, could you tie up? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to worry about that kid, Jean. If she can get my watch, she's a born dip. <laughs> Come on, where do you get that stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Take it, Marsha. All right, come on, darling, we better go. Take the photograph. What is he snooping around here for? Who? Gordon Grant of the Chronicle. 
I thought he was in Boston. Yes, he was. And after he solved the Biddle murder, the Chronicle brought him on here. Why? You know him? Well, I used to. I didn't know he was a client of yours. I don't think I'd better risk seeing him. He might recognize me. Uh, no, not in that makeup. Not unless he knows you pretty well. Well, he did know me pretty well. How well? Yeah. Has he got anything on you? No. Well, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he's got something on all of us. We're all a bit leery of that guy. Well, there's no use in getting fidgety about it. Come on, put the scenery on. If we don't let him in this time, he'd only come back later. And if we turn him down too many times, he might get suspicious. Yeah. We better let him in. Ah, the famous Madame Mysterio. This is indeed a place. You have heard of me? Oh, quite often. From your many great book clients. You know, there was old Mrs. Wallace for one. You may remember her. She lost a package of valuable bonds not long ago. Of course, you know Mr. Remington and Mrs. Carsley. They all speak of you in terms of wonder. I do not remember them all. Many of my clients are not known to me by name. But I'm very happy if I have been of service. You don't really believe you have been, do you? Oh, I see. You have no faith in spiritualism or communication. Oh, I believe in a hereafter. I may even believe that the dead have some influence on the living. But why must you use all this to bring them back? The incense and the dimness seem to help. They subordinate my personality. I am here, you see, not as myself, but as a messenger bearing tidings from the spirit world. What is it you wish to know? Well, well first, I... I wonder if we couldn't meet face to face. Then I'd be able to understand your phenomena. I'd be more inclined to believe you. Don't you see? If I could see the messenger without her veil, I might become more easily convinced. It is not my purpose to convert non-believers. You must forgive me. I'm very tired tonight. I must save my strength for those who come to me for help. I'm sure you will understand. May I ask you to return some other time? But I've been so anxious to meet you. I've been wanting to talk this entire matter over with you. I'm sorry. You will have to excuse me. Salam Saeed, Rose Rose. The Jersey Division report they found an abandoned car at Fort Lee. It was too wrecked to identify, but they think it's the kidnapper's car. We're not taking any chances. You, McKenna, continue searching the garages. And remember Mrs. Ramsey's description of the chauffeur and the woman. And don't let me see any of you guys around here without a clue. Now clear out all of you. And if you're muffing this job, I'll shake up the whole force.
All right, Jack. Have you heard anything new about the kidnapping? Uh, it looks like we're up against another cropper. Uh, what a life. There's a Mrs. Ramsey out there. Is she still there? Yes, yeah, she's been waiting for over a half an hour. She wants to see you. I'll give her the gate. Uh, no, wait a minute. Might as well have it over with. Tell her to come in. Say, do you want me to blow? Uh, you stick around, kid. But keep everything you hear to yourself. You don't care how long you keep me waiting, do you? You don't want to see me, and no wonder. God knows why they ever made you inspector of police. Now look here, Mrs. Ramsey. I made up my mind not to see you because you're wasting my time. Well, if you have any new evidence, let's have it. The inspector's doing his best, Mrs. Ramsey. Who is this? Gordon Grant, police reporter from the Chronicle. Oh, I see. Well, the Lord knows how you'd ever profit by new evidence. But I'll give it to you. Take a look at that, and maybe you'll get an idea how thieves and cutthroats flourish under your police efficiency. Dear madam, your grandchild was kidnapped not for ransom, but for your cruelty to me four years ago, when you prosecuted an innocent girl as a thief. As you ignored the claims of justice and mercy then, I am going to ignore them now. The girl will grow up as a thief in a distant city, a thief among thieves, and will share the fate you prepared for Jean Oliver. Jean Oliver? Why, I knew a girl named Jean Oliver once. We grew up together. It couldn't be the same. But, ma'am, that's her writing. Well, we look her up and see if she has a police record. Tom, see if we have anything on Jean Oliver. Well, I tell you, whoever that woman is, she's got to give that baby up. If you can't handle this case yourself, I'll take it to the police commissioner. It's been months since my grandchild was stolen, and you've done nothing. I've done the best I can. You haven't. I'll send my own detectives after her if need be. A thousand of them. I'll spend every cent I've got to save my grandchild. The address quoted by those who claimed her body leads where I've just come from. 72 Barrow Street is the apartment of Madame Mysteria. Is that so? Jean Oliver couldn't be dead. That wreck occurred months ago. And this letter was postmarked yesterday. You say you saw a woman in the kidnapper's car. Would you recognize her if you saw her again? I don't think so. She was heavily veiled. Now, Inspector, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll call for you at your home tomorrow evening at 9 o'clock. Then we'll go to Madame Mysteries and you pretend that you're my aunt. Then you have your men picked in place. <laughs>
I've seen you with that kid. You can't go through with making a crook out of her. She's gotten under your skin. You're not for this racket. Why don't you give it up while you can? Don't forget, Fox, I've served time. Even if I wanted to get out, I couldn't. Just like they told me at Auburn. You'll try to go straight, but you won't be able to. Someone will always turn up who knows you. Yes, but you can go west or abroad and change your name. Jean Oliver is legally dead. We swore that Madame Mysterious body was yours when we buried her. Why don't you come with me, huh? I love you, Jean. Marry me. If you insisted, I'd even go straight. On the level, I would. Listen, Fog, I couldn't marry a man unless I loved him. Hmm. Well, that means you don't love me. Oh, I like you. You, you you've been swell to me. You know how grateful I am, don't you? I know. It's that other guy. I can't forget him, Fox. I've tried. I guess I'll always love him. Well, let's drop it. I'm sorry, Jean. I guess love is a thing we can't manage as we please. I've never been up against it before. It's an unhappy sort of feeling, isn't it? Well, I guess we better beat it back to the joint before it's too late. There's a short in them wires behind the throne chair. I'm going up and try to fix it. Gee, I don't know what's the matter with me tonight. I got the willies. I'm as nervous as a kitten. Maybe it's because the fox and Jean ain't here, eh? You know, Goofy, I'm beginning to think that the fox has got a case on that skirt. And when you mix business with pleasure, it ain't so good. With that Grant guy hanging around, we all ought to be doubly careful. Now, don't worry about the fox. He can match wits with the cops, all right. He ain't never failed yet. Yeah, maybe. There must be them now. Let's go and look. Let's see. Oh, no. that's right, you pull his tail. 
Put your arms up, darling. There. Up we go. Get ready. I get the duck all wet? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Dad. Oh, were you lonesome without me, darling? Yes, Mommy, but where did you go? Where did I go? I went out to dinner. And what did you do? Did you play with all the toys? Yes. <laughs> Mm. Oh, the duck is drowning. Now, if you've been good, what do you want me to give you? Hmm? A piece of candy. <laughs> it strikes me there's an unusual amount of bulls in this neighborhood tonight. Yeah? Well, the one that was out there tonight, he's been out there every night. Yes, but tonight there's another one with him. And about a block below, I saw a flock of them looking from a shop window. Gee, do you think they're onto us? No, no, they're just down here getting the air. What do you think they would be doing in this part of the town when we've got the Ramsey kid right down in our own house? Isn't that Grant, that reporter guy, sneaking around? Hey, I'll bet you that if there's going to be a raid, that's the guy that stepped them off. My advice is to smuggle the kid out the back way. We well, can find a safer place for them here. Sure. Our Ramsey. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? Which one do you want? The big one. The big one. I knew that. This is bigger. Is that bigger? <laughs> all right. Come on, Doc. Chew it nicely. Don't swallow it all at once. <laughs> you don't like that? <laughs> Can you sing, darling? Think you could sing Mommy a little song? Yeah. Come on, now you try. Mm. I can with my mouth full. <laughs> well, you swallow that and then you sing for mother. Mother, boy, man, be on a treetop when a wind blows it right away. What is it? Hey, the fox told me to get the kid out of here tonight. Why? The cops. Oh, but where are you going to take her? Never mind. Don't worry. The fox has got a safe place. Oh, now, all right. you're sure she'll be all right. Absolutely. It's oh. okay. Come on. I don't like this. <laughs> Sweetheart, you're going for a ride with Goosey. You like that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. You got a thing? Yeah. Now, give me those toes, darling. <laughs> My face. My toes. <laughs> What's on the end of your finger? Isn't that a little toe? <laughs> yes. The father right. toes, the mother toes, the hand toes. <laughs> <laughs> and the baby toes. That's it. There's the baby toes. Take the toe away with you. The baby toes is the smallest toe in the whole world. <laughs> That's right. Your other arm. Oh, Goofy, you'll take Let care of it. You won't let her catch cold. Leave it to me. There. 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 Bye-bye, sweetheart. <laughs> oh. Come, come on, let me have it. Right. Come on, darling. We're going for a ride. Take good care of her, yes, Goofy. That Grant guy again. Oh. Got an old lady with him. Nothing to worry about as long as we got rid of the kid. I'll tell you. I'll bring the Grant guy in here and then go out and stall the old lady until Goofy gets a chance to make his getaway with the kid. Huh? No, I, I won't see him again. That's all right, kid. Snap into it. Get hold of your nerves. If that Grant fella gets fresh, I'll take care of him. You put that gun away, do you hear? Now, you listen to me. I want this understood. Before I stand for murder, I'll go back to prison even if I had to take all of you with me. Now, nobody intends to murder anybody. But a man has a right to fight in self-defense, to protect himself from outside interference. And I'm just prepared, that's all. Uh, 
แต่ลำจ้าหี
He says you must realize your danger and make amends while there is still time in this incarnation. You must listen to me. You must heed. He will give you a sign that you cannot doubt. No wonder she knows these things. It's coming. I'm goofy. Tell them to stop, G. The baby's in danger. Wires must be cut. That'll keep you out of mischief for a while. Hold him up, pardon. Right. Bring them all down to you. Through that door. We're going to get at the bottom of this right now. Bring him back here. Are you feeling better now, dear? All of a sudden, I saw Goofy, and it was real. Oh, the child is in danger. Here, sit down here. Just right here. That's it. Where is that child? Maybe. Come on, speak up. Maybe. Say, Chief, if this fellow doesn't come across, we'll give him the works. Sure. Well, there's no use you threatening me with a third degree. I've been through more of them than you've ever seen. The fact remains, I know where the kid is. Well, where is she? And before I tell, I've got a little deal to make. Not with you flatfoots, because I don't trust any of you guys. It's Gordon Grant here. At least he's too fond of the girl to go back on his word. Hey, you're under arrest now for complicity in the kidnapping. You can't prove anything against me. Uh. And if you did, that wouldn't bring back the child, would it? Hey, you better let me handle this. What sort of a deal do you want? Well, you can have the kid back on two conditions. First, Dean Oliver is to go scot-free. 
He's not to be held for any charge whatever, whether it concerns the psychic business or the kidnapping. <laughs> a name is not even to be mentioned in connection with this case. Is that all? Uh, she's going up with you and the rest of your gang. We've caught you clean this time. Yeah. Well, the tide is rising. Oh. What's your other condition? And Mrs. Ramsey has got to admit that she cooked up that charge against Miss Oliver. She's got to make a clean breast of it. How dare you talk to me like this? She robbed me of my grandchild, and you should all answer to the law for it. And now listen, Mrs. Ramsey. You know well enough that you sent a girl to prison who was innocent. Hey, you're very much interested in this girl, ain't you? And interested enough to see her get a square deal, that's all. She's not in my class and never has been. She don't belong in this game. So you gotta let her go. <laughs> you ain't asking much, are you? Well, maybe they can make the girl talk. Sure. Now, no, cut it, cut it. No, no. You can't get anything out of her because she doesn't know a thing. I'm the only guy that knows the hideaway. I had my partner, Goofy, sneak the kid out of the house tonight and hide her. I'm convinced it was Goofy who spoke to us tonight. Yeah. And he is dead. So no one knows where the kid is except me. How do we know you're even telling the truth? And the tide's rising, Mrs. Ramsey. Oh. The tide's rising. Oh, my baby. They'll help you, Mrs. Ramsey, if you'll only withdraw your charge. You know she's innocent. They only want you to be fair. That's all. My fault. It's my fault. I did put the things in her trunk myself. <laughs> my son was blindly in love with her, and he meant everything to me. I didn't want to press the charge against her. I just wanted to get her out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> now, Inspector, how about fulfilling our part of the deal? What do you say? They're on the level. Are oh, you crazy? Oh, come on, Chief. Be satisfied. Yeah, I'll tell you what. It'll be a great thing if you get the girl back. Well, I... I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put a swell layout in all the papers. I'll say that you pursued the kidnappers so efficiently that they were forced to abandon the girl and flee. What do you say, Chief? Mm -hmm. All right, I'll take you on. Where's the kid? Not far from here. You can make it in 10 minutes. Pier 19, next to the Lackawanna slip. Take Mrs. Ramsey down to Pier 19. <laughs> I'll wait until you get back. I'll right. give you an hour. <laughs> Times certainly have changed when guys like you come here to tell us what to do. Yeah. Well, I can tell you a lot. Yeah, well, I'm listening. Have you had a couple of guys like me on the force? Hey, maybe you're like my shield, eh? Yeah, next on that. So long as the guys like you were, them, I'll stick to my racket. Uh, say, <laughs> Chief, will it be all right to take uh, Miss Oliver with me? I'll be responsible for her appearance. No. No one leaves here until that child's return. I don't trust you, Cook. Well, you don't have to trust us. We pay cash. forget what you've done for me. Oh, gee, you're a great guy. Goodbye, Fox.
give him a hand. He's saving them. 